Hey folks, I'm Andre, also known as Medla. And I'm Paul, also known as Pabro. We're back with another dev update today. It's September 10th, so everything after today won't be covered. We've got a wide range of topics to cover today, including matchmaking, Timo's art and audio update, LOL player days, a bit on worlds, and a quick look at season 2025. But first, let's hear from the modes team. Hey everyone, Eduardo Riot Cadmus Cortejoso here to give you an update on modes. It's been a big year for us. Not only did Arena make its return for round three, but we also launched Swarm. These modes have been such a joy for all of us to work on, and so on behalf of the entire modes team, thank you all for playing. Now, let's get into the future of Arena and Swarm. I'll start with the question that everyone's been asking, are you gonna make Arena permanent? The short answer is no. While Arena has been getting a lot of love from many of you. Once we hit the two month mark, we saw a pretty big drop off in game hours and engagement. Unfortunately, even our mid run content update didn't quite inspire a lot of players to come back. But don't worry, Arena won't be gone forever. We're planning on bringing it back in the first half of next year with some much needed quality of life improvements and even some more wacky augments for you to play around with. Now for Swarm. So from the beginning, Swarm was never intended to be a permanent game mode. And that's still the case right now. I know a lot of us, myself included, look back fondly on both Star Guardian and Odyssey, but Swarm actually surpassed both of these modes in terms of player engagement. And while we don't have a decision on if or when Swarm will be back just yet, given how much you all played, we're taking some of the learnings into consideration for future game modes and even the potential return of Swarm. I also wanted to let you know that Ultimate Spellbook will be returning as our next rotating game mode. It's already on PB right now and will be going out next patch. And before I go, I wanted to talk a little bit about ARAM. We know ARAM hasn't gotten much focus this year outside of regular balance updates. But don't worry, ARAM enjoyers, we got something cooking for you that will be oven fresh before the end of the year. That's it for the modes team for now. Make sure to check out the dev blog that comes out with this video for more information on both Swarm and Arena. And we'll be back in January to walk you through some of our plans in 2025. Hey everyone, I'm Riot Froxon. I'm here to talk to you about matchmaking. Today we wanted to take a moment to look at how some of the changes we introduced this season have landed and to share the areas we're looking to tackle next. Earlier this year, we had an issue causing some accounts to enter negative LP states. This meant players would lose more LP per loss than they'd gain per win even if their MMR indicated they should be climbing. As of today, we no longer see this problem. Another problem we've been working on is autofilling. We don't want games to be decided by which team has fewer autofilled players, so we ship some changes in 1417 to better balance the amount of filled players on each team. At the time of recording, we've noticed some pretty good improvements, with the amount of games with an autofill discrepancy of two or more players dropping from 10 to 15% to less than 0.1%. As of today, Games with 2-0 or 3-1 autofill players have been effectively eliminated. <laughs> this is a good first step, but we want to do more work in this area. Next up, we'll be working on situations where one team has an autofilled player and the other doesn't, with a focus on high MMR, where this problem is especially impactful because of the small player populations. We've also got an evaluation underway on a system called True Skill 2 that could potentially help out meaningfully with things like better placing new accounts and detection of Smurfs. As of now, we're actively testing its effectiveness and determining how good a fit it is for League. We'll let you all know once we have an update on what testing has shown. And that's it for me today. Make sure to check out the dev blog that just came out with a lot more details on how our 2024 changes landed and where we're looking to focus our efforts going forward. All right, a slight change of pace. Let's talk about Timo's art and audio update. It's coming to the Rift and Patch 1420 nice. with updated visuals, audio, animations, and splash art. Gameplay won't be changing, so for those of you who love or hate Timo, you're welcome, and or we're sorry, maybe. When this update comes out, we'll be increasing the cost of his Happy Elf, Recon, and Badger skins to 750, given the increased quality on those skins. As with Lee Sin's update earlier in the year, if you don't own these skins yet, you can purchase them for 520 RP until it goes live if you want to get them at that cheaper price. If you'd like to learn more, check out our blog that's live today that goes into a whole bunch of details about our favorite little monster and making him look brand new. Also, Timo's receiving a theme song, which will go live next week. Here's a sneak peek. Switching topics, we've got Worlds 2025 kicking off in three days on September 25th with plans in Berlin. After Berlin, it's then Paris for both quarterfinals and semifinals, followed by London for the finals. This year we've brought back Pickums, along with a new feature we're calling Global Power Rankings. We think should be good if you want to get up to speed on teams or regions that you're less familiar with. Or maybe you just want to argue with our rankings 
about how your favorite teams stack up against their competition globally. We just dropped a dev blog that explains global power rankings in more detail, so go check it out if you want to learn more. And finally, the world's anthem will drop tomorrow, so keep your eyes and ears peeled for that. In case you missed it, this year's world's artist is Linkin Park. Along with Worlds in October, we'll also be celebrating League Player Days, a celebration of your league journeys over the last 15 years. Player Days will be three themed days that celebrate players of all kinds, from casual enjoyers to hardcore ranked climbers. The celebration will kick off with Creative Day, with a focus especially on artists, then Music Day to celebrate our true calling, being a music company, and finally, Esports Day to highlight the ultimate competition in League. On each day, we'll share stories from players around the globe about what League means to them. There'll also be some missions you can complete for earnable in-game content, including a very special and subversary Civer skin. Nailed it. Yep. There'll also be three Player Days skins available for purchase, with proceeds going towards the Riot Games Social Impact Fund. These will be Cosplayer Nico, Esports Fan Trundle, and finally, the skin you've all been waiting decades for, celebrating love for the music of KDA. The one, the only, Gragas. For every purchase of these three Player Day skins from October 9th to October 28th, 2024, Riot will contribute 100% of proceeds as well as a 3x match to the Riot Games Social Impact Fund. The festivities kick off on October 9th, which will also have a dev Q&A stream at 2 p.m. Pacific time. Join to have some fun with lead devs, hear some stories from the old days, celebrate all of you, and just hang out. But we want to be clear, there won't be any big announcements or new games, so please stop by and say hi, chat about League, and meme with us or on us. While Player Days is all about celebrating your League journeys over the past 15 years, we also want to talk a bit about our plans for next year. Starting in 2025, we're evolving our approach with League Seasons. Throughout the year, we'll have three distinct thematic seasons, each bringing its own narrative, progression, and content updates. Our goal is for each season to feel distinct, with different experiences, themes, moments, etc. highlighted. So that means in 2025, each season will include a new champion that's a core part of that season's thematic, with some connection to champions from other seasons as well. Each season will also have gameplay updates too, of course. One thing we'll be tackling for the first season next year is how a game can feel doom once you have an exposed nexus, and quite often, people lose motivation to continue to fight. So we're exploring options on how to solve this experience and hope to bring a more competitive feel right to the very end of the game. Now, we'll look at some larger scope changes as well, of course, but we're gonna be saving those for a little bit. We know we didn't get into too much detail on gameplay today. We'll have a lot more though on our January plans and a dev update in November a few days after the finale of Arcane. All right, so that's it for now. Don't forget to finalize your pickums, tune into Worlds, read the dev blogs, and join us for player days. As always, thank you for watching, and we'll see you on the Rift. See ya. Bye.